All right. Um, so my name is Shane Boyer, and I am a PM on the Cloud Advocate team. And today we're going to be talking about building cloud native apps with .NET Core 3.0 and Kubernetes. So a couple of things that uh, we're going to go through here is first we're going to talk about some health checks, uh, address the, the changes and updates that we've made in the Docker images, uh, talk about that new template that Glenn started out with. He did a great job, but we're going to we're going to jump more into uh, building some worker services, some endpoint routing, and then we'll talk about some of the things that we can do with Kubernetes and also uh, the configuration system that we have built into uh, ASP.NET Core and .NET Core and what it offers there. So first, let's talk about health checks. Um, health checks is uh, that endpoint that we have uh, built into our, uh, our, our system here in ASP.NET Core. And I know for a long time in my past life uh, at, at work, I've done a lot of uh, coding around building an endpoint that we used to call watchdog services, where I would just build an endpoint on my services that would return some sort of a response that in turn, I would probably have some sort of a service that would hit it and say that it was okay. So now in ASP.NET Core, we've got um, a new way to uh, create an endpoint that's just a, uh, a simple add. So now we're just referencing a new NuGet package that's uh, ASP.NET Core Diagnostics under Health Checks. And just by adding in this new services middleware, services.addHealthChecks, and then new, and now adding this, this new endpoint, uh, endpoints.mapHealthChecks. And then I'm, in this specific example, I'm just adding a slash health, and we can make that anything we'd like, uh, but for me it makes sense to add uh, slash health. Uh, by running that, now I can go ahead and hit that slash health endpoint, and it returns obviously a response if I'm healthy, and it'll say okay or re return that, uh, that 200. Now we can expand upon that and also, uh, also add in, my transitions want to keep going, <laughs> add in uh, dot, uh, add database checks as well. So if I want to make sure that my app also has database connectivity, I can also set up uh, uh, connections to uh, my database backends. And if my service is not uh, connecting to the database properly, then it will return an unhealthy response as well. And this is really helpful when you're running into microservice development and you're deploying onto your cluster or into your containers and you want to make sure that when you're doing these rolling updates, that your service starts up correctly and that you're hitting your, uh, your health points um, uh, that they're up and running. So just by adding that dot add database checks uh, is available now also in these uh, diagnostics as well. So moving on to our Docker images. Now, containers is really at the core of building our microservices. Uh, and some of the improvements that we've done in .NET Core 3.0 uh, is really important when it comes to building, doing that inter inner loop development and making these more efficient uh, as we're building out our services. And as a part of that, uh, making them smaller is, is very important. So when we look at our Debian-based images, uh, previously under 2.2, .2, there were 261 megs, which is a decent size, but now we've reduced that down to 207. And in Alpine images, you'll see that we've got 166 down to 106. And that's a significant reduction in size when it comes to uh, pulling those images and also scaling out. Uh, and that's just the SDK. When you're looking at the actual runtime here, we're down to 88 megs on an Alpine image, which is really nice when it comes to uh, being able to pull those images and scale those out on a cluster uh, when we're having to expand for those spikes in traffic. Now, Glenn mentioned in the keynote uh, real briefly about building out the new worker service. Now, a worker service is a new template that we have available to us in .NET Core 3.0 that allows us to build those types of services that don't necessarily rely on an HTTP request. Uh, these services are much like that Windows service that you would create that has long running processes that just needs to continually run and do work without having to rely on some sort of a request. Um, these are also services that we can expand to do work similar to a system, uh, system daemon service on Linux with simple, um, simple support. Really easy to get started with this. Um, it works on a generic host, and a generic host is much like our, our web host, except it does not rely on anything that's web specific. Uh, the web host builder is built to kind of pre-run uh, pre Kestrel. This here is just to, to host any generic uh, service that's uh, built on, um, 
on the iHost builder. And in this specific example, here we just have a worker service that's going to add a host of service and be able to run. Uh, in order to expand that to run a Windows service, we're just going to add a NuGet package very simply uh, using the hosting that Windows service NuGet package and then add one simple line called use uh, Windows service. And similarly, if we want to run a system D service on Linux, it's the same example uh, for us to make that change. We add the Microsoft extension hosting.systemd NuGet package and then this add.use systemd. And then all of the other nice features of .NET Core is available to us such as uh, dependency injection and all of the other features as far as middleware are available to us here. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hop out to my Ubuntu WSL. And very simply, we'll just use our .NET new. We'll say worker. And we'll make an out directory of worker. And here we're just using the new template. It's going to create our worker service. And we'll see what that looks like in VS Code. So we'll open this up on VS Code to see how this looks like. And it looks like it's going to unpack a couple of things for us on our VS Code server, which means we got a quick update. All right. So what this is going to uh, show here is just the template. We'll open up our worker real quick. And this is going to look like many of the other templates that we've had in uh, .NET Core 3.0. Again, it just works on the generic host. And by default, we're going to have our logger. It's an iLogger. And we'll execute async with a cancellation. In this particular uh, the, the template here, it's just going to wait for a cancellation token or a cancellation request to come in before it uh, shuts down the service. In our program CS, you see it uses create host builder, does the build run. We don't want to do that right now. And it's just going to run our worker service. So we go look at worker real quick. And what's this doing is basically is every second, we're just going to uh, write out to the console um, that we're running at a specific time. So if I go back out to our command line here in Ubuntu, Let's do our simple .NET run. Oh, I actually have to go into my worker. Let's clear that and do .NET run. So this should run just like any of our other .NET applications. And we should, the expectation should be that it's just actually going to print out um, that we're running here. And you'll see that we're workers running, uh, which is really great. Now, we could add those NuGet packages and either set this up as a Linux service or as our Windows service. But we should, in the interest of staying with our theme of building our, our services that would run on Kubernetes, uh, I thought it'd be nice for us to uh, put this in a, in a Docker container because I want to run this on my cluster maybe uh, to do some other work later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Docker container here. And we'll pick uh, .NET Core. We'll run it on Linux, and sure, why not? So now that we have our Docker container in here, it'll just produce our worker here. I'm going to use kind of the power of the cloud to build this, and I'm going to go ahead and use my Azure Container uh, Registry to go ahead and build this out for me. So I'll do this build, and I'll go ahead and tag this as my worker service. If I can spell here, service one, and we'll tag it latest. I need to pass my registry and the context. So what we'll do is we'll actually take our worker service and we'll send it up to, oh, make sure my, my Docker file is in there. Where did it add my Docker file? Uh, Oops. Let's just do it this way. We'll build our image. My in worker. Doesn't seem to find my worker file there. 
All right, so we did this earlier. We're gonna go ahead and go up into our worker. So we've got one built here. So we've got a latest, and we can actually run an instance of this. We can run an instance in our container. Let's see, this is worker two. Run it in Linux here. And we can deploy this container over to our, an actual container instance. So this run an actual ACI instance of the actual worker. And while that's deploying, we'll go ahead and look at our container instances. And we've got a worker side test here and we could fire this up to see how this is running. So we could start that container, right? And the expectation would be that our logs would show the same thing as the actual container instance running, which is, uh, which is great. So now we can take a worker service that would run, and you could expect that we could build this to uh, take some things off of a queue and do some work and, uh, and then shut it down as we need to, or just have a long, uh, long running process. So we'll let that fire up and go on to the next thing here. So endpoint routing is another feature that we have that uh, basically as we were building out previous APIs uh, using MVC, uh, some of the feedback that we got was, well, I don't really want the V as a part of my MVC. And what I want to build is just the actual endpoint here. So I would like to build a lot of APIs for uh, my microservices that are out there. And really all I want to do is just put an endpoint on, on that work, on that microservice, because it's just doing specific work on a specific endpoint. So as we saw with the health checks, that's also using this endpoint routing uh, as a way to return a, a response on a specific a route. So here we're just adding uh, app.useRouting, and then we're saying use endpoints and mapping that slash hello to a response. And this is just part of a, uh, uh, the simple web template that if I go to slash hello, uh, it'll return our hello world. Uh, and I don't have to set up the, the controllers or the models or the views as part of MVC. So this allows me to do uh, endpoints and services based on just a path as opposed to setting up the whole MVC uh, without doing that. So if I uh, go into back to my... Uh, Ubuntu instance here, you can see what that looks like. And we can just do dot new, and we can say uh, web, and we'll do a simple web output here. All right, let's see what that looks like. All right, so if I go into my startup, we've got our uh, endpoints use routing. We're mapping this here. And again, we could just come down here and map another endpoint if we wanted to. Same way, map endpoint. Nope, we don't want to do that. Thank you. Map endpoints. And I could do slash chain if I wanted to, and then have a response um, as well, and then have that same do that same type of response for whatever endpoint you wanted to. It's very simple. All right. So the last thing that we've got is our configuration. So .NET Core configuration, uh, configuration is you know based on the key value pairs. Uh, we have a lot of providers, and the configuration providers read configuration data into those key value pairs, and since 2.0, 2.1, we've been able to use JSON, XML, any environmental variables. Now we have Azure App Configuration as an option, and there's a lot of other custom uh, configuration providers as well. So why is that important for microservices? And that really comes into Kubernetes. So Kubernetes provides two primary uh, uh, mechanisms for uh, configuring their apps. And one is config maps, and another is, uh, is secrets. So uh, in the secrets here uh, is basically kind of what we've been doing in, in ASP.NET Core where 
we don't want to deploy our database connection strings and other secrets uh, with our app settings, uh, but we want to create a file and be able to put them into, uh, into a location that's, that's private and secure. So in Kubernetes, we can create a secret uh, with a key and also pass that file in there, and that'll create that generic secret uh, on the cluster or pod that, will, that can be used uh, uh, with, by the application. So in the actual like, deployment YAML file, uh, we'll notice here that we've got the key points here and the volume we're creating here. Uh, we're creating that secrets back. So if I go back to the previous slide here, what we're doing is we're using the file uh, secrets.json with that secret connection. So if I'm connecting to a database, I'm going to create that on the pod. And then I'll reference that in that volume that I'm creating on my Kubernetes cluster on the pod under slash app, slash app, slash secrets, and then using that as a key value. Now, in my ASP.NET Core or .NET Core application, uh, I'm going to use that add JSON file uh, as the config in my configuration builder in order to reference that. And now it's going to be uh, available to me on my pod. Now, the good thing about that is, is it just works. I don't have to think extra about how I need to reference that information uh, in my Kubernetes configuration as a developer. I'm just doing it as it makes sense to me uh, with any other configuration. Uh, it's the same as in any file or XML file. Uh, I'm just adding it to a path that I think or should exist on, uh, on the actual infrastructure that I'm deploying to. So if we want to look at this uh, example here, if I just open up the full example, Actually, let's go back and check on our sidecar test here. Looks like we should be running. If we look at our logs for this container, let's refresh that. Our logs are available. We can actually go check our, our logs here and refresh them. And now our worker is sending back our logs, which is pretty great. All right, so now let me uh, look at our worker here. Too many CDs. All right, so awesome. So we'll open up this app, and this is a full uh, worker file that basically will work as a sidecar for us. But what I want to show here is in our, sorry, that's the wrong app. We want to actually look at the web application that has our configuration in it. So in our, co in our uh, web application, we've got our, our Kubernetes deployment files. And that's where we're mapping all of our configuration. Here we go. So let's see if we can get rid of this, open this a little bit more. All right. So here's our Kubernetes file for our deployments for the actual web application. And then what we also want to look at is the worker. And the worker file is using that configuration to where we're setting some environment variables. We also have a secret already set up in order to set our configuration to our, uh, an Azure table storage that's set up as a secret as I've shown in the, on the slide before. So what I want to do now is we'll walk through and look at uh, setting up a worker that I've set up as, as a container. We deploy the ACR. And that worker we've set up as a way to work as a sidecar to monitor that healthy endpoint. You'll see that here in our values that this worker is configured to hit a healthy endpoint um, and report back as a log watcher, basically to make sure that we're, we're up and running. And it's going to report that into table storage for us. So this is an example of a worker that's just set up in a container, kind of as a long running process, very similar to maybe a Windows service that you might run under a box under your desk. To, as a watchdog service to make sure your apps are up and running. So what I want to do now is take all of this and basically push it up to Kubernetes and make sure we're up and going. So just as we 
go out to our configuration and we need to clear this out. So now I want to deploy all this out to my cluster. And if the cloud is working great for us today, we want to look at, let's look at our cluster, make sure we're running. All right, so we have uh, no services currently running out there. So now what I want to do is first apply our worker service. Actually, let's actually put the web out there first. Deployment. So that's good to go. And then now we're going to actually set out the worker service. The deployment will deploy our web service out there. Now we want the worker service to be out there. So it's going to check and see if it's up and running. All right, so it's clear. And then we'll actually look at our services. All right, so it looks like simple web is being loaded. We're waiting for that public endpoint. And the worker sidecar is also running. So what we do is we'll do Q, Q control, and we'll get services and see if we get a public IP. Look, our public IP is running. So now we can go look at our super fancy web website. Make sure that's up and going. All right, so hello world is working. That's fantastic. Check our health endpoint because that's what our worker service is going to hit. Oh, healthy can be found. This might be a good test for our worker service. All right, now we can go check our logs. Let's take this down here. So our logs are actually going to write out to our table storage. It's already written 231. So we go all the way down to the bottom. We'll do a refresh. You can see here it's debug, it's starting. You see our worker is running, it's hitting our start. We're getting some information here. Let's go back to the end. One more refresh. Go back to the last log. And it looks like the web app is good to go. So now we've got a sidecar worker service that's really not related to the actual application. You can imagine we're going to have multiple applications on there, multiple services to check those health endpoints to make sure we're up and going. And now it's hitting an Azure table storage using Serilog. Uh, so we're using the other, uh, in the other services that are available to us to build these applications and all running in a Kubernetes cluster. We just make sure that we're still going here. Control here. And make sure everything is up and going. Awesome. So now I have my super awesome Hello World app. It's being monitored by a worker service, and I'm getting logs in Azure Table Storage. All right, let's go back here. And that takes me to the end of my time.